Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Black Rat combo control deck titled Half and Half, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and the deck features the Warlock class plus Scourge of the Skyclaves combo. Warlock class, a 1 mana class enchantment introducing Forgotten Realms that says at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life, then for 2 mana we can get it to level 2, in which case we look at the top 3 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand and the rest in our graveyard, and for 7 mana we can then get it to level 3, saying at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn, so it essentially doubles our damage output, and a level 3 Warlock class can set up a 1 hit KO in combination with a kicked Scourge of the Skyclaves, normally a 2 mana star star, whose power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players, but we can also kick it for 5 additional mana, so that's 7 mana total, and when we cast the spell, if it was kicked, each player loses half of their life around it up, so because Scourge of the Skyclaves rounds up, we're guaranteed to kill the opponent in our end step with a level 3 Warlock class. So that's the two card combo that our deck is capable of, and then outside of the combo we're a black rat control deck that has a ton of removal to interact with the opponent, so we have enough time to set up this expensive 7 mana combo, and then we also have ways to ramp into the combo thanks to our treasures, with Seize Spoils which discards a card and then draws two and makes the treasure, as well as Unexpected Windfall from Forgotten Realms, 4 mana, discard a card, draw two, and we get to make two treasure tokens at instant speed. And Unexpected Windfall in particular is also great for ramping into a turn 5. Tybalt, a Cosmic Imposter, the backside of Valky, God of Lies, gives us a 5 loyalty Planeswalker that can provide a ton of card advantage and removal with the minus 3. And we also have the flexibility of playing Valky for 2 mana to take a look at the opponent's hand and maybe take away a creature, which Valky can turn into later as well. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got a bit of removal with 2 copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a cheap removal spell that can be kicked to take out larger creatures or planeswalkers. Then we've got a split of 2 copies of Flunk and 2 copies of Power Word Kill as cheap spot removal spells at instant speed. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Palanca Predation as a discard spell that can also be played as a tap land. 2 copies of Soul Shatter as another instant speed removal spell can also hit planeswalkers. We've got our Cease Spoils, Unexpected Windfall, and then a couple sweepers with three copies of Crippling Fear and two copies of Shadow's Verdict. And then topping off our curve, besides of course our Planeswalker and our various 7 mana spells, we also have two copies of Burning Rune Demon, a 6-6 Demon Berserker with Flying, that when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for two cards with the different names not named Burning Rune Demon, and the opponent can put one of them into our hand and one in our graveyard, so that's also potentially a way to help us assemble the combo, can maybe get one of the missing combo pieces plus a Valky God of Lies, and the opponent is unlikely to want to give us the Tybalt Planeswalker, so that way we can still potentially assemble our two card combo. And then going over the mana base, we're not playing any creature lands, although you could easily include a few of them. We've got 10 basic swamps, 10 basic mountains, and 4 of the black rat pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Couple removal spells and seize the spoils. Not particularly close to our combo here, but that's fine. Just want to get to the late game and then we've got a lot of powerful cards to leverage. Scavenger currently can't kill with Flunk. Don't have double black for Warlock class either. Could still play the Warlock class, take a hit and then maybe next turn if we pick up a Swamp Crippling Fear. The other option was Seize the Spoils, but there's nothing I necessarily want to discard here. Faceless Haven's a good one. There's our double black. So now I'm lanking level up Warlock class, keep up Flunk. And I'm fine picking up an extra land. And yeah, I'll take the Swamp. Alright, opponent with an end of turn. Even death. Okay, so now I can flunk the scavenger if I want. 
or I can kill the even death. Or next turn just go for Crippling Fear. So we'll take a slightly bigger hit. Right, opponent turns on Faceless Saven, so that's probably the creature we want to kill here with Flunk. Untap and Crippling Fear. Alright, and now we just need to get to 7 mana. Unexpected Windfall can help. Kinda wanna main phase it, so I can hit my land drop for a turn. If our opponent has another even death, then keeping up Soul Shatter would be beneficial, so in that case I just wanna seize his spoils and hope to hit my land drop. And discard, let's say, Blood Chief's Thirst to keep the Crippling Fear. Right, land is good, so if we see an end of turn dragon we can kill it, we do not. Alright, well, now we've got Warlock class to level up. And then next turn, Scourge is lethal. So if our opponent does nothing, maybe they're sitting on a pile of removal, we're still good to go. Alright, if they had the dragon this turn... And a Turgrid's Lantern, that's fine. And I can easily lose three here, or discard a card, doesn't matter. Take five, we're at five. And Kicked Scourge will do it. Doesn't matter that the opponent was at 24. This combo can kill from any life total. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand, double Warlock class, to maybe find a Tybalt we can Windfall ramp into, or find our Scourge of the Skyclaves for the Wombo combo. Especially on the play, Warlock class gets even better, because you don't often get to spend your mana Proactively, the opponent doesn't always present a creature that you can kill early on. So that keeps us busy in the meantime. Alright, seize the spoils, I guess, over Soul Chatter. Although next turn I could also Warlock class level up again. Opponent red green with a Magda. Yeah, turn to Magda with Sentinel. It's quite a combo. Get to make a treasure right away. So we're already at the point where we need to find a sweeper, pretty much. If I seize the spoils, we can also draw Shadow's Verdict and cast it next turn, as opposed to just Crippling Fear. So I think I prefer that over Warlock class. And then... I think Discard Predation. Although I could get rid of one class, I suppose. Right, no sweeper yet. So opponent's going to get to ramp into some powerful things, including Goldspan Dragons. Clean. Magda makes more treasure. No sweeper. So now what are the options? I can windfall discard lands. I can check out their hand with predation, although that doesn't help me find an answer for the board. And Magda threatens to make five treasure and get anything out of their deck. So maybe the play is uh, windfall or warlock class level up and look for a sweeper. I think I prefer keeping up my mana and going for the windfall then. Discourage the opponent from maybe running out their big creature, which we won't be able to answer. Opponent's got an end of turn 
deadly dispute, sacking the gas, make a treasure. So yeah, they've got their five treasures for Magda already. And I have to imagine they've got some dragons in there. So we'll see what they get. Maybe now my best bet is just to assemble my two-card combo. Windfall, next turn level of Borlock class, and then hope that I can uh, combo off and one-hit KO the opponent. Opponent plays a second Magda. Interesting. Flunk is an answer to Magda. So I did not pick up Scourge. If we seize 4, 5, 6, still wouldn't be able to level up class afterwards. Yeah, I guess we maybe have a look with Predation and then Flunk Magda. Maybe they don't have anything to search up with the uh, 5 treasure ability. Aha, uh -huh. Prince of Undeath, I see. Well, that's gone. And... Can take out Magda. Opponent can still make a treasure and have 5 total, so we'll see if they actually have anything to get. Maybe I should have waited until end of turn, have them make the treasure and response flunk Magda so they can sacrifice five treasures for a dragon. Now, could Soul Shatter the gold span, of course, which is probably worth it, even though it costs all my treasure. Okay, I mean, as the dust settles, we're not in terrible shape. Still at 15. Opponent's hand is mostly empty. And we have a few ways to dig for our Scourge of the Skyclaves. So maybe start with Spoils. And then we'll just play another class and level it up. Okay, so if we can find Valky, so we can play Tybalt, or if we can find Scourge, or maybe our Demon. So th those are all good. In this case, probably go for Shadow's Verdict, since it also cleans up the opponent's graveyard to prevent Prince of Undeath from doing anything. Oof. That's unfortunate. A one turn window for Goldspan Dragon. And yeah, now we're in serious trouble. Thirst to the rescue, sort of. Just play this tapped. Okay. So next turn I'll have to clean up with Shadow's Verdict. Dead to another gold span off the top. This pew to draw two. Sentinel. All right, there's our demon, but we got a Shadow's Verdict first, I think. Keep Mountain in hand for future windfalls or spoils. And then demon can get Tybalt plus our uh, Scourge of the Skyclaves. And 
and by keeping extra lands in hand, they won't be able to flunk my demon. Scourge and Valky. Now we still need to level up our Warlock class, so it's gonna take a few turns to get there. Okay, level up. And next turn we've got to kill. Sentinel's fine. And kick Scourge. And our opponent knows what's incoming and explodes. Oof, that was a close game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and we've got a fine hand. Two copies of Warlock class to start out. Gives us a bit of card selection with a level 2. Can hopefully find our Scourge eventually. And then a Crippling Fear to make sure we don't get run over by an aggressive deck. Turn on the Forest into Blind Blade. Just level up our Warlock class. And yeah, there's a Scourge which I could take. Which I don't mind since we have our Sweeper, we have four lands already. And Seize Spoils is kind of comparable with the uh, Unexpected Windfall. Alright, so it's an elf tribal deck. Can have a look with Plaque of Predation, or we can play it as a tap plant, play Backup Warlock class, or even play Warlock class and level it up. I don't think I need to Plaque of Predation just yet. I guess we could maybe snipe a Planeswalker that's more difficult to deal with. But I'm relatively happy just uh, leveling up an extra Warlock class here. And then probably go with the Shadow's Verdict as an extra sweeper. Even though a land 5 is still useful. Scam for Avenger. That can draw the opponents a few extra cards here if we go for Crippling Fear. So I could decide to wait on Shadow's Verdict instead to deny the card draw. And then now pluck a Predation, make sure they don't have a Planeswalker or some other way to stop our sweeper. Alright, that's a miss. Couple 1 and 2 drops in hand. So we'll take a beating here, but next turn we can Shadow's Verdict. Alright, opponents overextending a little bit here into our Sweeper, maybe relying on the Avenger to draw the more cards. So, this is gonna be a blowout. Sentinel into Avenger. And we'll just play our Demon. And then grab another Shadow's Verdict. Plus, I guess I just want a land. Sure. Probably get the land. And then next turn we can level up Warlock class, turn after Kicked Scourge. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Facing Eye Twitch and the Hive of the Eye Tyrants, so opponent playing Eye Tribal. Got a couple ramp spells here, so if we can pick up something like Tybalt, we can ramp into it. Shadow's Verdict also quite good since it prevents the opponent from learning with Eye Twitch. And it uh, doesn't matter too much here. Although they can always sacrifice Eye Twitch to Dina. Senchmore Witch. Okay. There's a Scourge, so we've got the combo assembled. I'll seize, discarding another seize, and then next turn I might have to Crippling Fear. 
Now they can potentially learn for Containment Breach to destroy the Warlock class. Although that's probably not something they'll do right away. Double Satchmore Witch. Yeah, this uh, Sweeper's gonna be pretty effective. Opponent learns, so Crippling Fear is good enough here. Can save the verdict for later. Apprentice is fine. Can Power Ward kill that? So, let's see here, get six mana. So this turn I could play an extra Warlock class, level it up and Power Ward kill on the Apprentice. Even though saving this for something like a Hive could be beneficial too. And then we'll grab a Tybalt. And I'll just kill the Apprentice now, so we don't take any unnecessary damage. Can maybe be sacrificed to Village Rites, but it does not. Trigger double Warlock class. Next turn, I'll level it up, and turn after, hopefully, kicked Scourge for the win. And there's a land to accomplish that. So I don't necessarily expect my opponent to learn for Containment Breach here, even if they have the option. Alright, let's see how that works out. I guess they could have a Mortality Spear on my level 3 Warlock class in response. That's the only thing I can think of, which is a reason to level up the other Warlock class first. But we'll see how this goes. Right, opponent with a plumber response, hoping to find something like Mortality Spear. Go to our end step, and as soon as a trigger hits the stack, it's game over. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one Warlock class, turn two level it up, turn three maybe have a look. Opponent's mono black so far. And Windfall looks decent here, can help me ramp into Tybalt on turn five. So another mono black faceless haven deck. All right, this time our opponent has the predation. Luckily, cannot take Valky since that has two convert mana cost. Takes her own predation, so don't have anything going on this turn. Next turn we can windfall. Could see Faceless Haven attack, since they know we don't have any instant speed removal in hand. And we didn't pick any up. Alright, so we're gonna end of turn Windfall, discarding... Not sure what yet, maybe a Shadow's Verdict. A Lantern, that's fine. I think we can take three. And then Tybalt can also get rid of the Lantern. Although then we lose Tybalt in the process to the Haven. Might still be worth it. So if I plus two, our opponent probably just kills Tybalt with a removal spell. If I minus on Lantern, could just see Haven attack. But that buys me time, which is all we need here. Mine. 
And we've got a backup Tybalt waiting in the wings. Alright, Soul Shatter kills Tybalt. Feels like a Haven attack would have been good enough. Alright, so... Next turn I can either level up Warlock class or play an extra Tybalt, which is probably better. And then for now, maybe play Lantern, keep up Flunk, which can kill the Faceless Haven. And I guess I should do this now. Opponent probably takes the three. Ah, they've got a backup lantern. At this point, I could consider discarding, let's say, a Blood Chief's Thirsts. They could potentially play a Spider Queen on five. Alright, I'll take three one more turn. And then I don't have a copy of uh, Scourge of the Sky Cliffs in hand yet. So I think I prefer playing an extra Tybalt. And then we can get rid of the Lantern once again. Which we can maybe play a Sturgrid instead of Lantern. Alright, so again, if they use Haven to kill Tybalt, I'm okay with it. Go blank to make me discard two. Already have seven lands in play. Alright, so we get two plus. Disciple. That's a combo with Turgrid. Ooh, we get a Professor Onyx. And Soul Shatter's fine. Come on, there's gotta be something useful. So their hand must be pretty stacked if they're willing to discard an Onyx with Turgrid in play, and I have to imagine our opponent knows how Turgrid works if they're playing it in their own deck. Alright, Clutches makes me discard two. I considered holding the land in case of an extra discard effect, but I don't think I mind either way. Skull Raid. And a Demon's pretty good. Let's see. Can I kill my opponents with a... Warlock class leveled up. I guess we'll use a Lantern first. And then if our opponent takes a three, Warlock class should seal the deal. Our opponent discards instead. So in that case, we'll make him discard some more. Yes, please. And attack for four. Alright, I mean, we're in pretty good shape here. Could also untap Lantern, or we can Windfall. So it didn't quite go for the combo with this game. Uh, sure, we can Windfall discarding spoils so I can hang on to my demon, not that it matters. I guess I could have even killed my opponents by going Windfall into Seize the Spoils last turn. Thanks to the Magecraft trigger. I'm not really thinking about my opponent's cards here. Alright. Well, it's not often that you get to go off with Turgrid, even less so when you don't have Turgrid in your deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Just play Perdition as our black source. Now I can play it a class on one, level it up on two. 
Don't have a sweeper yet, and so probably gonna need that if we're up against an elf tribal deck. So most likely gonna power word kill the Avenger now. I'll do it before they can untap and use it as mana. Back up Avenger. We can Soul Shatter. Alright, times two. Crippling Fear will clean that up, but is also going to draw the opponent a lot of cards. So... I could seize the spoils looking for Shadow's Verdict instead, or maybe activate a Warlock class, play Tap Tradition. Although I wouldn't be able to play Verdict next turn, because we don't have the treasure in that case. But then again, I also need an untapped land, so it's kind of unlikely that we find Shadow's Verdict plus untapped land. So in that case, I think we just use Warlock class, see what's up. And... I think I take the land over the Windfall, but it's close. Just play this tapped. And then, sure, we'll Crippling Fear, Pwn gets to draw a ton of cards, but... At least we're not going to take as much damage anymore. Warmaster. Opponent's also going to take quite a bit of damage from their own adventures. Opponents at 10. Realmwalker naming Elf. Into a Sculptor. Alright, there's Scourge, so we just need to get to 7 mana here. For now... Seize discarding one Valky might be okay. Alternatively, I can just Soul Shatter to kill the Realm Walker. And then play a Valky as a 2 1. I guess that's reasonable too. Setter Hand's not actually all that great, just a bunch of lands and another Sculpture. Playing Scourge as a creature is also quite powerful here. So we might just go for that line. Ooh, Shadow Sage, okay. That drains me for a bunch. Opponent decides to gain life instead. And then I could take two, since I don't want to give him Harald's. So we have six mana. Yeah, I think just playing Scourge is going to be best. And then maybe seize discarding Valky. Could also level up my Valky to be... Harald, but still doesn't attack profitably. And then next turn, I could potentially uh, kill the opponent if they take 8 and we level up our Warlock class. Tactician to pump the team. Still have a good block. Alright, and our opponent packs it in. Maybe a little bit premature here, but I guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing black mana, but we've got to seize the spoils to help out. Yeah, it's not ideal, but we'll try Shadow's Verdict to catch us back up. Could be up against the blue-black control. Which is not an ideal matchup, since I can counter our big 
Seven mana, please. So probably not gonna need Shadow's Verdict. Well, we've got the combo. Can't really afford to use my only treasure to play the Warlock class. As per control. Yeah, we'll just keep hitting our land drops and then try and sneak this Warlock class into play. Opponent discarding a land to hand size, so their hand's quite stacked. Class resolves. Not gonna level it up. Do that next turn. Right, Crawling Barons is a win condition. And a Cosmos Elixir. Okay. So, Seize discarding. Probably Flunk. Even though Flunk is useful for taking out Crawling Barons, Soul Shatter also answers Planeswalkers, which is probably more relevant. Okay, we'll level up Warlock class. Okay, so our game plan is pretty straightforward here. Get a level 3 Warlock class and then We've got three Scourges that they'll have to counter to avoid losing the game. Don't know if the opponent has any enchantment removal, maybe a bound spell for the Warlock class. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Vanishing Verse. Okay, well, that's gonna make things all more difficult. Hunt's getting environmental sciences. Sir so Poen probably has mascot exhibition in the sideboard too, which we can potentially answer with something like Shadow's Verdict. Well, now we need to find another Warlock class. Although going for Windfall is assuredly going to run into a counter. So I could just play Kicked Scourge, but I don't think that's going to accomplish much. It makes their Elixir less impactful, so they probably counter a Kicked Scourge. Which I guess is a fine exchange here. And the trigger still happens. So yeah, I guess if they didn't have an answer for Warlock class, we uh, could have killed them even through a counterspell since Scourge triggers on cast and not on enters the battlefield. There's Warlock class. Now opponent does have 10 power on the board plus a creature land. So... What's my game plan? Sadly got rid of that Shadow's Verdict earlier. Second Warlock class level it up to level 2. Still play Scourge with my treasure. I can Windfall hope to find one of my sweepers. Which is maybe not a terrible idea. Discard. Maybe Soul Shatter at this point. Or maybe a land still. Alright. Can play Tybalt. What if I were to attack? What happens then? Does our opponent take it? Could be dead to their creature land if I attack and kill their 4-4. So it's kind of a close call here.
but in theory I like attacking. Opponent just jumps. So if I play Warlock class, level up, I could still draw a Sweeper. But if I miss, I guess I can still play Scourge on defense. Might be better than Tibalt and Minus on the 4-4. Alright, Crippling Fear. That works. So that can name Demon. So it shouldn't be that to the creature line plus a 4-4. Four, four. Next turn we can start leveling the Warlock class, try and play defense with Scourge. Opponent's gonna hang back. Well, yeah, I think we just Warlock class and then I could also play Valky to check out her hand, not that that's gonna accomplish much. So it's probably just Warlock class and then next turn hope that Scourge wins the game. And can maybe play Valky as a blocker. Or I can Tybalt, minus on Xenathar. But that's probably getting countered. Soul Shatter kills Xenathar too. Hmm. Yeah, so we can expect this to be a counter spell. So if I Soul Shatter, that's definitely gonna meet a counter spell. And then I can still. Tybalt and Minus. Alright, I guess that's not bad. And if this resolves, I'll just level up my Warlock class instead. So the real game plan here is uh, still to combo the opponents. Soul Shatter kills Tybalt. I'm happy trading my Scourge for the 4-4. Since the Elixir makes it so the Scourge is gonna become pretty small soon. Alright, I think it's just level up Warlock class. And then... Still have two mana left, I can play an extra Scourge. Although they're both gonna die to Elixir next turn. Can play a Valky, just have an extra blocker. Check out her hands. Make sure they don't have another Vanishing Verse. Alright. So, it's Warlock class. And next turn we've got the kill lined up. Even through a counter spell, as we've learned. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Might as well chump since we're gonna lose Scourge anyway. There we go. Can check out their exiled cards, which was a Doom Scar, so they didn't have a counter spell anyway. But uh, yeah, the fact that Scourge can uh, win through a counter spell means that just resolving a Warlock class turn one pretty easy against a control deck. And if they don't have an answer, you can eventually level it up all the way, and then a kicked Scourge will close out the game for you. So yeah, overall, pretty powerful two-card combo in this already pretty decent black-red control deck that gets to play some powerful cards like Tybalt. 
And as a side note, make sure to also include a sideboard, even though this is a best of one deck without any lessons in the main deck, but there is a chance that your Tybalt exiles a card from the opponent that lets you learn, so having a few lessons in the sideboard can be useful, and with the same reasoning, maybe include one copy of Legion Angel in case the opponent has their own Legion Angel, so those are fun things to think about when building a Tybalt deck as well. But yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.